Hello, and welcome to BIM9 Presents Private BIM Clouds. My name is Lonnie Compton, and I'll be your host for this presentation. Today we're going to take a journey, a journey around cloud computing. And specifically, we're going to get into talking about private BIM clouds. But before we go there, let's talk about cloud computing in general. You know, this is an industry buzzword that is all over TV and radio and mass media. And the definition I subscribe to is the one here in orange, which is cloud computing is internet-based computing whereby shared resources, software, and other information are provided to computers and other devices on demand like electricity. Now, there's hundreds of examples of this, but I'd like to use the example of Google, where you type something in, it sends the information out to hundreds of processors, and then feeds back data that it collates from the internet. Now, this is a great example of cloud computing working very successfully in our industry. Now, with that in mind, taking that cloud computing concept and applying it to the building design space is an interesting concept. We like the ideas of shared resources or centralized data and remote access, but the challenge is when we take our design technology like Revit and put it on the cloud, the results just aren't all that satisfactory. So at BIM9, we've created a term called private BIM cloud. And a private BIM cloud is a computer or computers that have been virtualized, allowing multiple users to access the same system at the same time from any location with an internet connection. And the private BIM cloud could be located in your office or in a data center. And the computers that make up that PBC can be workstations, servers, or any multi-core system that has an abundance of RAM and allows processor virtualization. Now, we're going to get into much more depth of what private BIM clouds are and how they can be worked in your organization. But understand that the term private is really about keeping it within your ne network or behind your firewall or in your dedicated data center. BIM is really we're referring to that in the aspect of building design information. So products like Revit and Navisworks. And then last but not least is cloud, giving you the flexibility and the functionality of remote access, centralized data. All of those terms are very specifically selected in how we define a private BIM cloud. So, where did private BIM clouds come from? Well, BIM9 came up with the concept while addressing real-world issues in the building design space. It wasn't that long ago that we were working for design firms that specialized in large projects and high-end design. And when the economy turned, it really forced us to take a, a hard look at how we were connecting offices and accessing our BIM data. So, the bandwidth cost between offices was something that was literally costing us thousands of dollars a month. Then we also had to address the high-end workstations that we had the surplus of, unfortunately, as some of those employees were let go. And then last but not least, we had a lot of those ex-employees that now work for other companies, and we still really needed them to work on our projects with us. So how do we give them remote access to our design data? Now, another discussion with the design professional is that, like many of you, I have been to BIM presentation after BIM presentation, and they always have these diagrams. And the diagrams have the BIM in the middle, and then they have these other objects around them for owner and contractor and engineer. Then they have arrows, and these arrows are a very interesting topic. It's an interesting topic because they always have them, and no one ever talks about them. And this is a tough topic because how do you get the owner and the contractor and the architect all to work in the same network at the same time on the same data. And that's really the beauty of a private BIM cloud, is it's simple but elegant because it allows us to work in that true BIM environment and make integration pra integrated practice come alive in the industry. So we're going to take a look at how a private BIM cloud works. So the private BIM cloud I'm going to be connecting to is located in Las Vegas. And then I'm going to be accessing it from a MacBook Pro in a separate location, and I'm connected over a wireless network. So I want everybody to get ready. We're going to take a trip to Las Vegas. Here we go. So now we're here at my desktop. And I'm going to use RDP to load up my private BIM cloud. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of movie magic here as I launch Revit, just because it takes 45 seconds to load Revit. And in this recording, I really don't have time to allow Revit to load manually. So we're going to load up the sample project file and get Revit running with a little bit of speeding up process. 
But now that we're in the Revit file and we're going to start moving around, all this is real time. So I'm going to switch over to a floor plan view. And then we're going to jump in and pick on a door, change that door object to a single door, kind of pick on some text to make some modification to that. And then we're going to pan around a little bit here to see some panning efforts. Look at the uh, model in a few different places. They're going to change the view over to a reflected ceiling plan. Again, do some panning so we see how the drawing regenerates. And then I'm going to jump over to a three-dimensional view. Now in this view, I'm going to use my orbit tool to orbit my 3D view around. And then I'm going to use my orientation tool to orient this 3D view to a section view. So now that we have a three-dimensional section cut through a stairwell, then I'm going to zoom in on that, pick on an object, and then do a 3D orbit into that 3D section. So there you have Revit functioning on the cloud, remotely accessed via this laptop, and working as you would expect Revit to perform. So now that we've seen a private BIM cloud in action, let's take a look at what we actually did. So here in this diagram, we see the remote user accessing via wireless network to the internet, coming back down through a firewall or VPN, connecting to the private BIM cloud, and working on a virtual machine sitting on that machine. Now because it's on the network, it has access to the file server, just like all the other users in that office. So we can all be working on the same Revit project at the same time. This is the beauty of this mechanism. Instead of moving the data to the user, we're actually bringing the user to the data without changing their physical location. So if you can imagine, being connected to that private BIM cloud with a really long video cable called the internet. That's essentially what we're doing. So what kind of machine were we connected to? Well, we literally went down to our local electronics store in Las Vegas, it's called Fry's, and we picked up an i7-960 processor with four cores, 24 gigs of RAM, some hard drive space, a video card, but the interesting thing is we can support three to six users simultaneously on that machine it's the same performance what you just see me do with one user. So yeah, you heard that right. I can actually get three to six users accessing that same machine at the same time and get the same Revit performance that you just saw me do in the presentation. Of course, minus the uh, movie magic for Revit load times. But that's the beauty of this mechanism, allowing multiple users to access the same system at the same time from any location with internet connection. So why a private BIM cloud for the design professional? Well, there's a number of challenges that we have to deal with in the design profession when it comes to technology. And we looked at private BIM clouds and we really narrowed it down to four key areas. The first one is branch office. So how do we connect multiple offices to a single model or to single data? So if I've got a big company with different offices and I want to do work share amongst those offices, Private Boom Clouds give me that ability and the flexibility to work share amongst multiple offices. And then that remote access concept where I've got people out in the field and they need to access that data remotely from any device with an internet connection. Then we get into workstation longevity and workstation longevity is the ability to buy that single machine but then share it amongst multiple users in the company. So I no longer have to go buy a new workstation for every person that's going to run a product, product like Revit. And that really extends the life of the existing workstations because you don't really have to extend what's at their desk, just what they're connecting to. And then last but not least is integrated design. That whole promise of BIM getting multiple team players to work on the same model at the same time, or at least on the same network at the same time, preventing me from having to upload and download files on a continuous basis to keep everybody on the same page. Now, as we start talking about a private BIM cloud, we often run into the discussion about licensing. And I often get the question of, you know, how do I get around my Autodesk license agreement? And to be perfectly honest, you don't. What you really ought to be thinking about is, how do I comply with my Autodesk license agreement? And in this environment, especially in the integrated design arena, this is really a BYOL environment, which is the bring your own license. Now, in integrated practice, whenever you have another consultant accessing your private BIM cloud and working on that particular cloud, producing their drawings, the license that they're using must be their own. Now, we accomplish this a few different ways. But it's quite simple for us to do, but it's important that you understand that aspect. 
And then under the operating system licensing, you really got to understand that your guest machine that you're logging in with has to have a license. And then, of course, the machine that you're logging into, the virtual machine, needs to be a Windows 7 Ultimate or a inter Windows 7 Enterprise license. The rest of the applications on your private BIM cloud are going to be licensed just like you license them on any other environment as a workstation by workstation basis. The key is, is you're going to have multiple workstations on a single computer, and you need to consider that when you look at your licensing. So now that we've learned how Private BIM Cloud affects the industry, let's talk a little bit about BIM 9 and the services that we produce. The first thing I want to introduce is the concept of BIM 9 Box. In this solution, we really set up a mechanism to where you can invest the right amount of money at the right time to make the best decision about a Private BIM Cloud for your organization. And we do this through three phases. The first one is what we've called the BIM 9 Box Trial. The second phase is the pick your upgrade path part of the process, and we have three options for that, which is the BIM 9 integration kit, the BIM 9 box, and the BIM 9 brain trust. And phase three, of course, is the integration of that private BIM cloud, the path that you've selected to go down. So phase one, the BIM 9 box trial, what we actually do is we first start out with a discovery workbook. We use this to gather information to ensure your network can support a private BIM cloud. Then we give you the full use of a pre-configured BIM 9 private BIM cloud for 30 days. We deliver that to your office, install it on your network, and configure it for three guest users. And then we train those people that are going to be using it during the trial process. Now, what is that BIM 9 box? Now, essentially, the hardware is made up of an i7 3.2 gigahertz 4-core processor, 24 gigs of RAM, 500, 512 gigs of solid-state hard drive space, a DVD drive, Windows 7, a mouse, and a keyboard. Now we configure it for three users, but of course we can actually do it up to five users on this machine based on the amount of RAM that we use per user. But your trial box will come configured for those three users. So now that phase one is complete, you're going to be in a perfect position to select your upgrade path. And you know that's really what phase two is all about. In phase two, we're going to give you three options. The first one being the BIM 9 integration kit. And the integration kit is for companies who have really decided that they want that private BIM cloud, but they've also standardized on hardware, and they would like the private BIM cloud built on their standard hardware. So in this option, we're going to come out and do an on-site discovery that's going to expand on the discovery workbook. Then we're going to set the private BIM cloud up on the hardware that you provide, and then we're going to do training for those guest login users and training for people that are going to manage the system. And then, of course, we're going to provide 90 days of silver lining support. The second option is the BIM 9 box option. And this option is for companies that say, yeah, I want the private BIM cloud, but I also like the hardware that came on the trial. In this option, we're just going to do that on-site discovery, then we're going to convert that trial hardware into a permanent BIM cloud for your office, do the training, and provide the 90 days of silver lining support. The third option is what we call the brain trust option. And this is basically for companies that say, yeah, I want the private BIM cloud, I want it on my standardized hardware, and I want to know how to build future private BIM clouds for myself. So if I want to expand my private BIM cloud by adding another box, I want to know how to do that. And we call that knowledge transfer. So very similar to the other options, but that knowledge transfer comes into play, and we provide a year of silver lining support with the brain trust option. Any one of these can be expanded in the silver lining support on a yearly contract. Now the pricing for all three of these options during the trial phase is the same, which is $5,000. In phase two, once you select your path, it determines if you keep or return the hardware from the trial phase. And then the upgrade path pricing is actually $6,000 for IK, $8,500 for B9B, and $11,000 for Brain Trust. So your total investment is $11,135 or $16,000 based on the option you do for the upgrade. Now, keep in mind that the IK and the Brain Trust both are options where you're going to be providing the final hardware for your permanent private BIM cloud. So you want to keep in mind that part of the investment of your total investment as well. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join us and watch our pre-recorded presentation. If you have any questions or comments and you would like to contact us, please feel free to do so. You can reach me at lonnie at bim9.com or you can reach Bill Devevic, the technical manager, at bill at bim9.com or also feel free to call me on my cell phone at 702-241-2999. I hope this presentation was a learning experience for you and gave you the knowledge you were looking for. 
and we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you again. Thanks, and have a great day.